So Jun, thanks for joining us today here in Sydney at ADAPT's Connected Cloud and Data Centre Edge. And today's theme is optimising sustainable and effective FinOps for our infrastructure and indeed for our businesses as well. As you think about that theme, what does it mean to you? I think it means a few things to me from the business point of view because um, over customer of big and small organisations, the buzzword of moving to the cloud because um, many of organizations are running on legacy applications with the technology debt, and now moving to the cloud allows them to have a new opportunity to be agile, to be grow mm-hmm. using new technologies. Mm-hmm. So getting to those business outcomes of agility, better service for our customers, and indeed better experiences for our people as well. And as we look at the um, ADAPT statistics, particularly around the cloud migration study, we saw this year there's been a bit of a stall. So I think 38% now of workloads are in the public cloud, which was pretty similar to last year. So it kind of says to me, cloud and infrastructure leaders are stepping back and assessing why and how they're moving application workloads into either the public cloud or private or in other environments as well. As you think about modernizing applications for those business outcomes, What are some of the challenges and how can we go about those challenges? It's quite interesting topic because um, as you said, last few years, pretty exponential growth of the cloud due to the COVID and other reasons. Mm -hmm. Many customers saying that we want to move to the cloud because that's the right thing to do. But then some lessons learned from that experience or transformation journey. Like some example that we talked previously is that like um, physical location is still a problem given the vast size of Australia. Some governments still want to retain the data within the border one for security and also for the local economies. So moving to the cloud is a lesson for people, right? It's not stopping, but some organizations may take a pause due to economic uncertainties and also technical challenge. Mm-hmm. But I think people are still thinking about what's the next step, what's the right move. So transformation is not always a straight line. <laughs> so it takes a few curve terms actually to learn from the previous lessons and apply those learning to the next steps. Mm. So almost these explosions, if you like, help to trigger us as technical technology leaders, but people leaders as well. Mm. Not just the cost of changing these things, but the value as well. And particularly coming back to some of those sovereignty, security, control concerns. Although organizations expect to have about 12% of their data platforms in the public cloud this year, there's still concerns around data security, privacy, sovereignty in transit, storage and rest. As you're speaking with others in the field, what are some of the approaches that have worked for you? Pretty good question, right? So building a business case is always important for doing the cloud journey because you need to have a plan, you need an economic model to make it sustainable and beneficial for the business. Ultimately, you must bring value to the business for moving to the cloud, mm-hmm. whether it's tangible monetary or in the intangible stuff like security, reliability, etc. So some of the lessons we learned from the journey is that like, um, you could be agile, you could be forward thinking, you need to take some smaller step before you take the big leap, and you must have your right economic model as well. So one product that the DXC we offer that we do at Cloud Economics, so many challenge customers are like, I bought so many cloud servers. I'm not sure actually how much I use and how much we waste in idle or whether we cannot cater for the peak period and cannot scale the solutions. So what we've done is we basically build this ingestion service to take the consumption data, mm-hmm. their charge information into one platform and visualize it for them. They can actually see that like pattern of spending on the cloud, the actual consumption versus what they bought they get understanding which service they have underutilized and which one they got potential to link to the actual profitability and growth mm. in business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we're really talking about here is how we visualize value across the end-to-end value chain, not just in infrastructure and the application layer that's sitting on top of that as well, but also the value across the business from infrastructure to business unit and ultimately out into our ecosystems as well. 
And what we're finding in the ADAPT research is that cloud and infrastructure leaders are building out these dashboards to be able to not only know where the value is traveling through, also the blockers to creating and capturing that value, but also what individual behaviors will lead to the organizational outcomes that we're looking for. As we go about building these dashboards and making sure they're interoperable across different cloud environments, what can you suggest? I think they should look for some experienced player like DXC and the like to actually to help them to build these command center like visualizations to make sure they can actually track the value chain from the lower technology level to the business process to the actual operation center to the FinOps because the operation is key to many business, right? And many CEO lack visibility of what they actually bought in the cloud servers. Especially there's no longer tangible things they can see, how many servers, how many cables they got, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's in this virtual world. It's important to make data transparent to the consumer, which is the CIO, CFO, and CEO. And also make sure that the vendor understanding they are in the, on the hook to meet the KPI of the cloud servers. Like it, cloud is a virtual thing, it's intangible, but it's critical to modern business. So make sure that like you work with someone like the good SI can help you to integrate the cloud into one monitoring solutions using a managed cloud service. Mm -hmm. yep. They can do the monitoring. So John, just as we think about how we get the visibility um, across our value chains, what are some of the principles that can help cloud and infrastructure leaders? Yeah, I think the source of truth is important, understanding where the data is coming from, a common data model, which allow you to ingest data from different source and also have the right KPI because um, we are pretty overload of data these days, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's visualizations or data coming from all the internet things. We're basically understanding what's critical to business. Mm -hmm. Is it the serve uptime? Is it the um, utilization of the cloud service? Take out a critical measure, right? And have the alert built in into the monitoring solutions that allow you to be more proactive than reactive. The last thing you want is that on the peak season of your consumer buying, then your server went down or the service went out, then yeah. you cannot recover, right? You better be proactive, understand the consumer pattern, the data usage pattern of the cloud, and make sure you can provision in place in advance. So really what we're trying to do as not just infrastructure leaders, but as modern business leaders as well, is coming up with those new metrics that matter not just uptime and resiliency, but also how we're delivering value experience and differentiation to the organization, to customers as well. And those kinds of metrics are going to help to anticipate what the business needs to therefore lay out the roadmap for what we need to do as infrastructure leaders. <laughs>